Greetings, young sirs and young madams. We're going to speak about the future of crypto. But before we go there, you're going to find out why I think the way I think and how I reach my conclusions and where it's all coming from. So you're not obliged to do anything. You don't have to buy. You don't have to sell. You don't have to agree. I don't really care. I can just tell you I'm successful at what I do. I know what I'm doing. And I'm going to show you why. So some people need a bit of a push because some people, they have to be saved from themselves. So if you've been following me, you know I am 100% unbiased. I am independent. I don't follow anybody. I'm my own man. I make my own decisions. Okay, I don't apologize to anyone. And especially in crypto, right? Look how many times I've gone through coins. Over 500. Look at this. I personally investigated and filtered over 500 crypto altcoins. That's right. I owned around 500. How many do you think I looked at? Browse Telegram, check websites, use case, so many videos. Oh my God. If I want to show you the tabs, just 2x speed everything. I will use my keyboard to fast forward. I know when an influencer is about to tell a joke. When they break character and they start to tell a joke, oh, my hand instantly goes to the keyboard and I'll start fast forwarding until they get to the content again. And then I know, okay, they're about to shill something. I'll just hold on the right arrow and I'll skip fast forward through that. That's how many times I've done this. I know everyone, I know everything back to front. I even know some of these influencers more than know themselves. And many times the influencers wouldn't cover the coins. So I'd have to go look at the telegram, speak, check out the mods. I even know what scammers would use in their avatars on Telegram as admins. I could pick scammers out. I'm not going to give you the formula because I don't want a scammer to watch my videos and know how to like game the system. So I knew what they were doing. I knew the different pictures they used. They didn't even realize they were doing it themselves. I knew the types of things they hide. Okay? So... I jotted down so many notes. I'd have a profit or loss. I always track it in Bitcoin or Ethereum. I'd actually write down both. I want to know, okay, I put in this amount. How much Bitcoin was that worth? You know, oh, maybe I put in three ETH or maybe it, it pumped to like 18 ETH and I got out and I would write down what I rotated to. Now, I'm not going to show you the whole database. Of course, I'm not because I'm not going to, we're going to come and dox all my wallets and see everything I'm doing, right? So, I know what's important because I've been through over 500, man. I've seen all the experiments. And then after I got dusted, I would go watch videos on Bankless and all the other guys telling me why this thing collapsed and why it didn't work. And I'm like, oh, man, I made a mistake, right? Oh, was minus 70% wasn't cheap enough. I've got to check so many things. I've got to go check on chain, check liquidity, check future supply. All right, I'm giving this to you for free. And we have to navigate the future. Okay, I can't give you specific answers because everybody's still living in the past. I'm a trader and I'm an investor. You're always thinking about the future. Today doesn't matter, ever. If you're stuck in today and you're trying to do a linear extrapolation of the past, narrative, past narratives, past price performance, right? you're not going to make it. The past is done. Okay, so I've gone through so many coins, so many. And look, I put here, scam. So yeah, I was in a scam. I got scammed, man. You got to learn at the start. But because I'm here 18 hours a day, I absorbed so much, right? So look, I already know. In most cases, people own a coin because their friends told them about it. In my case, I dug through over 1,000 steaming piles of poop. And I bought a lot of them. And I also know which poop to pick. I know now. I got a feel for it. I can check it out now. Doesn't mean I'm going to be 100% right, but I can just tell you, like, okay, you know, experiment A has been done before 500 times, so you shouldn't do it. And then I would see another team trying to do it, right? And I would know to avoid it. And, you know, I got asked by a friend in a DM, said, hey, if you know the experiment's done before and that price pump, why don't you do it again? See, this is the trick, friends. You have to think like the average person out there. They're not stupid. People learn. The market learns. If something worked for that short amount of time and then it pumped and dumped and didn't work, 
you can't repeat that exact, exact same experiment. You need some exogenous factors like a big underlying bull market to try scam the next round of people again. And it can't be too close to when it failed. People still remember. So if you're trying to do DeFi stuff that happened in 2020, people still remember how that all happened. Okay, I know this because I would make the mistake of thinking, oh, if this thing pumped last time, then that same mechanic might get another pump. Nope, not even close. Not even close. The market learns, the market remembers. The players get smart, it gets more efficient. That's why crypto is getting harder and harder over time. You can't emulate Bitcoin early success and Ethereum early success and expect the same parameters to work. It's already being done. You have to give people what they don't even know they want yet, okay? So I already know this, I already know this. I'm here to share it with you, okay? So look, this example of where I got scammed. So I've already let you know, right? Just look at this edge, man. I wish someone told me this at the start. Well, no one even knew, right? So I'm not here to get bitter. I'm just, I, I've realized most people don't actually know this at all. So, you know, narratives, they have a life cycle, okay? ICOs are now in cycle number three and the gains are diminished. Cycle two had landmines for ICOs. So ICOs could still make you money, but there was a lot of like, you know, whitelisting, limited amount of money, you couldn't get the entry. Like I wanted to put like, you know, 10 grand for every single ICO, but you, know, you can only get like $300 allocation, $80 allocation, $500, okay? Then we thought we struck gold. One of my friends went to the BlockBank um, Telegram, started speaking, because we started hearing that these other two influencers were getting ICO allocations, other YouTube influencers, and they would say, oh, I go in and I speak to the um, the owners and the founders, right? And now I just know they're just talking out of their ass. It really means nothing, okay? But that we went and we did this. We started doing this. We're like, okay, we've got to get an edge. So we did. Here's one, right? And by the way, this is not to talk bad about B Bank or anything. This is just one name. There's 500 plus names out there. There's over 20,000 coins, okay? You just got to learn from this. So I gave an allocation part of this, 10,500. I gave it to my close friends and family. I think it was like a couple of them, everyone like putting in 150, $200. Remember everyone's portfolio size, much smaller than mine, but I still handed it out. I'm like, hey, you know, it's been tough. Let's do it, okay? And what I mean by tough is, you know, only the memes and the scams and the Ponzi's were pumping in the first quarter of 2021. <laughs> and many of the things you people thought would pump didn't really move, okay? So we got an ICO price like 9 to 10 cents and guess what? By the time we got our coins, was like down here, right? It was actually, when we, we got the first 10% of the coins where my mouse is at break even. <laughs> Think about that, in a bull market, in a bull market, we got a 10% of our allocation at break even and it only rallied 2x, <laughs> which is nothing. <laughs> this is an ICO, we got ICO. My friend literally went to the Telegram, started messaging the founders and stuff. Hey, we went, we're gonna, you know, we really support this, we're gonna help promote and do this, you know, and I would have helped them out. But then look what happened. Look what happened, okay? We dumped minus 93% below our ICO allocation. So then I knew the game was over. I knew by that point. I'm like, okay, what a perfect grift. People will auto buy ICOs. So your team gets in at one cent, okay? Early, your friends and family, if like if you own the project, you get in at one cent, but then you tell people, ah, we got an ICO for 10 cents, you know? And people think, oh, 10 cents is less than a dollar. And guess what? They basically just raise all the money off you. So instead of going to retail on Uniswap, they were like, every, that's why everyone, everybody started doing. I'm not saying B Bank did this, Maybe they did, right? Obviously, we got destroyed. But everyone started doing this at the very, very end. They did. They wouldn't even rely on the Uniswap listing for money. They would just find people who wanted to participate in ICOs and who were trying to participate early and get an edge over the market. We all got destroyed, okay? So, I've seen this experiment run thousands of times. I have a Zen update here as well. So, Jack has an update. This is just pool two mechanics, okay? An update for Zen where you provide liquidity and I've wrote, written here exit liquidity because that's what it is, man. You can call it any label you want. That's what it is. I've made many videos about it. We did this experiment 500,000 times in DeFi 2020 season. It doesn't work. Everybody got tricked in DeFi season 
right? Everyone got tricked in it, which is, let's go to Ethereum. Everybody got tricked during that DeFi season in 2020 around here because everyone saw market demand for these pool two coins. People would make a DeFi project and then they come in and then they have a pool, you know, for DeFi season spawned by a compound and then Andre and people would put in money. And so everyone thought, oh, there we have unlocked future demand from people. We've unlocked like, it's like the, you know, the miracle drug here. It's like, okay, people want to participate in stuff and they'll keep putting it, put putting money in and we can incentivize them with yield, which is just inflation from a token. Now, a lot of coins went through the moonshot, but they all collapsed to zero. All right, so that's what happened. We did this experiment so many times. Having a pool two, so pool one is, yeah, so pool one is where you have like Ethereum and another coin, and you can prov you can earn that token in inflation, the, the new token that, the creators have made, right? But pool two is like the super speculative one, is where you, your created token is paired with USD, and then, and then you're receiving more of that created token. So you're speculating on speculation here. So it's like, okay, I'm gonna buy the poop coin, and then I'm gonna put it in a pool, and you're gonna give me more of the poop coin. It's like super speculation here. And that's what everybody started doing and it all pumped and dumped, right? So this is what it is here. It's the same thing. It's literally the same thing if you just read it. So it doesn't stop the dumps. So if you're listening to this, I've just let you know, okay, there's nothing wrong with doing it. I'm just telling you, I'm not buying. You can do what you want to do. Be my guest, okay? So you can even see here, I've gone through and I've checked to go, okay, this is just, you provide liquidity and you get more of this coin. It could be coin A or coin B or coin C, it doesn't matter. It's to try to stop the dumps. What ends up happening is people with the supply unlocks, they don't care. They don't, they just get rid of everything, okay? They don't care if the coin from their entry went up 1,000x and then it dropped 995x. They don't care about that drop part. They don't hold to go back up. They just sell for the 5x because they're still 5x up. They, they'll even sell at a 2x up. They do that, okay? We, I saw this time and time and time again, right before a big bull market. Interest rates were 0%. They were doing QE in 2020, and it still wasn't enough to get people to hold. It still wasn't. So that's, that's when I started learning about network effects, and I started making my thesis, my framework. I'm like, oh, okay, there's something else going on here. You can't just give people an incentive for a community that they don't really care about. All right, you watch my videos, you keep watching, you understand all of this. This is nothing new to you, okay? So, moving on. What about the future? What about the future of crypto, you know? I wanna end on this note, so that's why I'm always thinking about what comes next. What's coming next, what's forming, right? So, Vitalik, right? Obviously, I watched this whole interview, one, one hour, 45 minutes, and Look what he's excited about. Because this guy can see stuff. He's a visionary. He made Bitcoin Magazine. That's right. He did. 2012, 2013. He made Bitcoin Magazine. He made Ethereum. He knows what's going on. So, number one, social recovery functions. He's excited about. This is where you have a an emergency, emergency type of recovery for your phrase. Where you have like a multi-sig wallet and maybe there's like a an institution in your country that has one of the signatures. And if you do, if you pass away, them, the institution and your family can like re recover your, your assets, you know. So this just helps crypto adoption over time, right? Two, smart contract wallets. Three, he's excited about layer twos, bringing the fees down. And four, privacy tech. Privacy technology is great because it will further help push adoption out. Just... It'll give people more incentive to join and to think about making applications in crypto, right? It's not gonna be like a, a narrative itself. Oh, privacy. It's like privacy is a human right, you know, like you need that. You it's it's going to it's going to be used to help, you know, fuel some of the narratives, but I don't think it's gonna be a narrative itself. Ah, privacy, yes, yes, like it's not <laughs> no one's getting excited. Oh, I'm private, right? So this last one, social abstraction layer, the next crypto tech. Here I am asking a question. So 
social abstraction layer is a new thing. See, right now, you're watching this video on YouTube, and YouTube pays for the servers. You don't need to pay for the servers when you watch my video. Social abstraction layer, that is the merging of two accounts. So instead of like paying a gas fee, right? Obviously in the future, gas fees are gonna be like pennies, right? Instead of paying something for an action, the, the protocol itself can pay for the action. So you can use DeFi stuff and access it without paying all the fees along the way. They will be able to do these actions for you, right? So wouldn't it be great if you bought an NFT for like $100 and then you got access to a website, a DeFi protocol, whatever it is, could, could be news, could be gaming, could be metaverse, so many possibilities. And every time you wanted to do an action, you don't need to do anything. You don't need to pay for the gas, for the approval, for this and that. They're, you know, they, they pay it for you. It makes it more seamless. You're using crypto in the background. You don't even know you're using it. You're just clicking on a website. You're playing a metaverse. You paid this one one. You paid this hundred dollar fee, and like like who's paying? Who's paying for these like approvals and the transactions and swapping an asset here and there, right? And it's, it's costing pennies, but really it's because you bought that hundred dollar NFT, and maybe the you know the company itself or whoever's the protocol behind it got the money, so it can afford to keep paying you, right? So you or you might put like. You put your money in a pool with like, you know, 100,000 other users. Maybe everyone's paying like $10. That goes into a pool and then it can fund the crypto transactions, the swaps. You know, maybe I send you like a shiny sword and then you send me like a helmet. And that actually goes through the blockchain. So this is the new layer tech going, going to happen. Now this is coming on the future. Now, it's not any use getting into it now. We need someone to develop something cool first. Retailers' imagination gets captured once they have something concrete. We trust me. We will know when something's out. We'll know. It's not going to be. Or oh, if you have to think about it, then it's not that revolutionary. Okay, it's not going to capture your imagination. It has to grab you, just like DeFi grabbed me. All right, gaming metaverse, see how it grabbed you. Oh, the possibilities. So something like that's going to grab us. In 2012, we had the fair launch from Bitcoin forks like Litecoin. 2016, we had the Ethereum ICOs. That was the next tech wave. In 2020, Uniswap was made or you know, it became popular. That helped fuel crypto, DeFi, swaps and everything, right? So every four years, there seems to be some sort of big tech that gets made. Wouldn't it be interesting if in 2024, next year, someone is able to flesh it out too? So that's why we're a bit still too early. That's why, like, if you're a trader, I don't think we're going to have some huge, sustained, massive euphoria bull pump this year because we don't, we haven't justified it. We haven't made anything new. We haven't really developed anything new. And remember, we are getting later in the cycle, friends. So everyone in crypto thinks we're early adopters. And the truth is, yes, you're in the late majority now. You, If you are trying experiments and trying to get in coins, that Bitcoin did and Ethereum did, and you're not changing the game much, then you're gonna you're not gonna win at all. We've already done these. We're moving on. We're in the late majority now. You've already got most of the people in. Most of the people just gonna throw their money in have come in. There's still gonna be pockets, of course, just like the stock market, right? But I'm gonna also mention here: you're not gonna retire off Bitcoin, and you'll be lucky to retire off Ethereum due to a supply shock deflationary narrative, which I hope comes, I'm praying comes, but we don't, not guarantees, in, there's no guarantees in this game, right? So you're gonna have to seek faster crypto. Look, this survey, man, 43% of men ages 18 to 29 say they've invested in, traded, or used a crypto. Now they're gonna keep putting in money over time, but that's over time, man, like over 10 years, 12 years, it smooths it out. You make money with the FOMO, the FOMO buys. And obviously, people did fee selling in 2022. It gives you cheap prices, okay? So everyone thinks we're like still early adopters. That's what everyone thinks. We're not. You've got to be kidding yourself we're not. Crypto being on the Super Bowl is not your early adopter, okay? Elon Musk buying with a billion dollars, you're not an early adopter. Roger Ver was an early adopter. Roger Ver was an innovator, man. He's a visionary. Roger Ver selling... His 20, 32,000x bag or whatever it was. Yeah, 32,000x from a dollar to 32k 
Roger Ver selling his 32,000 X bag to Michael Saylor is someone who's an innovator offloading to someone who's in the late majority, who thinks he's an early adopter. Okay, so Roger Ver's the innovator. <laughs> We're not innovators anymore. We're moving throughout, throughout time. People, I know, look, if you're listening to this, I know people get stressed looking at this because they think that you can't make it. But the answer is, yes, you can make it. You can. But you've got to try harder. That's why I'm here 16, 18 hours a day. I had this foresight back in 2020. I've been day trading since 2011. I know what happens when low-hanging fruit appears and how fast it disappears. The game gets exponentially harder. That's why I knew, okay, six hours a day is enough. 10 hours isn't enough. 16 and weekends, 24-7. I went through 500 plus altcoins. I knew. I knew. I go, low-hanging fruit, it goes away so fast. And now we live in a digital age. So... If you're watching me, you follow me on Twitter, like and subscribe on YouTube, you're going to keep up to date with this. We're going to have the edge over everyone else. Remember, I'm not here to debate. I'm not here to convince you of anything. I don't really care. I'm just showing you what I do. <laughs> I'm going to do what I do no matter what. Okay, I know what I do works because I spend 16 hours a day here. So other people get upset at mental frameworks I have. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, man. I know what I do works because... I'm willing to adapt, independent, unbiased, not going to get everything right. But you now you have to decide for yourself, okay? You have to decide your risk-adjusted weights, how much time and effort you want to put in. Some people are just better off in Bitcoin and Ethereum. Maybe you're better off guaranteeing, you know, a 4 to 5 to 6 to 7x rather than trying to play the casino, okay? More on that next time, friends. Till next time.